Hello class, in this video we are going to review the concept of charge density. We use this concept when we want to calculate either the field or the potential due to a continuous distribution of charge. So and let's remind ourselves that there could be three types of charge distribution, linear distribution, you could have surface distribution, or you could have a volume distribution of charge. This is a 1D object, this is a 2D object, and this is a three-dimensional object. So in all cases, we are going to define the charge density in the same way. In the case of 1D, we are going to define the charge density lambda as Q divided by the length of the object. In the case of a surface density, we define the charge density as nu equals to Q divided by the total area of the object. And in the case of the surface, we define rho, which is equal to Q divided by the total volume. With that definition, now we can say that the amount of charge, say, in an element right here the amount of charge delta Q in an element right there would be equal to what? To lambda times delta L. The amount of charge in this element, in this little triangle of area delta A, would be delta Q equals to nu times delta A. And the amount of charge in this volume, in this little cube here, would be delta Q equals to what? Equals to rho times delta V. Okay, so now how do we use that? Well, suppose that we want to get the potential at a point here, right? At that point. So we want the potential at, a, at this point P, and we define the vector from this little element to that point, Ri. Okay, that is your vector. So therefore, the little potential due to that little charge, delta V, is equal to what? To 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And then this is the charge up here on that little element, delta Q, divided by the length from that point, from where the charge is, to the point where we want the potential. And therefore, the total potential is equal to the sum over all the little elements along this length of 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught delta Q. And what is delta Q? Delta Q is lambda times delta Li divided by Ri. Okay? And then we can do the same for the surface. For the surface, we want delta V is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, delta Q divided by Ri, where you have a point here, and that Ri is the vector to that point, and therefore V is equal to the sum over all those elements of what? 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and then you have here nu times delta A divided by Ri. And you can have the same here for the volume. And this is the sum over all the little elements of 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And then you get rho times delta V divided by Ri, where this is the point where you get the potential, and this is your Ri. Okay, so this is a simple uh, video that showed review the concept of charge density. Let's see the type of objects where we use this. For one dimensional, we typically would have lines, and they have length L, and rings. And they would have, if this is the radius, they would have a length 2 pi r. So, so this is a line and a ring. 
if we for surface we would have planes of area A we could have a shell an spherical shell and that has an area of what 4 pi r squared or also we could have a cylinder we could have a cylinder and the cylinder would have r here and length l and the area of this cylinder would be what would be 2 pi r times l and for volume we would have typically a sphere that's the one that we would use mostly and the volume of a sphere is 4 3 pi r cube we could also have a cylinder where this is r and this is l and then the volume of this would be pi r squared l. Okay, so this is a quick review of charge density and how we use them in different problems. Uh,